Hey everybody, it's Catherine, and today I am back. I'm sorry, I kind of went on like a week hiatus, but as you can tell, I'm a little under the weather. Um, it took literally a week for me to recover from an illness, and the moral of the story is that if you have a roommate in college, nothing is sacred, and you probably will get sick. The place I'm standing right now is basically just a mountain of Kleenex, actually not even Kleenex. It got to the degree where I had exhausted all my Kleenex, so I was just walking around with a roll of tissue paper from the bathroom because that's how often I was just blowing my nose. It was crazy, but I'm glad to be back um, and back in action. And I got a ton of questions on my last video, which if you haven't seen, definitely um, click here. Um, it'll take you back there. And it's just announcing that my channel made a change. I'm no longer my preppy style and I'm actually Cather out now in theme with all the rest of my social media sites, which you can also follow in the description box. So um, with that little brief disclaimer, let's go in to see what you guys asked me. Okay, first, um, Fiona Wyckoff asked, what is your perfect life when you're 40? Um, when I'm 40, I would like to be living in Pasadena or South Pasadena, and I would likely be in a management position at Disney Imagineering, working on something new in the parks. Um, and I'd have two kiddos, and I'd have one dog, no, I'd have two dogs and two cats, one dog named Argus, the other named Oslo, and the cats would be Butterbean and Chiro Fafa. And don't ask me how I came up with those names, but they're very important to me, and that's what's going to happen there. So, oh, I, I guess I'd have a husband as well, um, and I think my last name would be changed as long as my husband's last name doesn't start with an N, because my name were like... Say like his last name were like Nathan or something. Catherine, Nathan just like runs together, so I will not do that. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, that's what I think about when I'm 40. Kimberly Nguyen asks, if a guy started liking you, but he dated one of your friends, what would you do? Um, so I never had this experience. Um, there were guys that had like histories with my friends, but like that never really like, concerned me. My friends aren't like super protective. Um, if they had like a very serious or like complicated relationship, um, I wouldn't involve myself with him. Like, I would like figure out like what wasn't working between you and that guy because like, chances are if that didn't work out with one of your friends, like it probably won't work out with you. Um, but then again, circumstances are already different. So, I mean, I personally wouldn't work at, worry about it, but maybe just like ask your friend like what her feelings on the matter are so you don't like hurt that relationship because um, to be perfectly honest, like, Unless you're like 28 years old, this guy probably isn't going to be like a long-term thing for you. And your friend will be a long-term thing for you, hopefully. Very heavily thumbed up question from Mia Moore. She said, I'm starting to apply to colleges, but the acceptance rates are really making me nervous. When you're applying to colleges, did you take acceptance rates into account and love you? Ah, love you too. Um, so yeah, it's getting really scary these days because I feel like by the time my kids apply to college, it'll be like 2.3 acceptance rate to like UCs. Um, so, I did take acceptance rates into account. Um, I definitely had some schools that had upwards of a 50% acceptance rate, just that I knew I was going to get in somewhere. Um, but also I took acceptance rates into account when I was looking at how selective the, or how rigorous the school might be. Um, because, you know, a school like Georgetown, like 16% versus Duke, which was like 11% versus like Boston College, which was like 32%. Um, it just kind of gives you like a good basis, like not really a good basis at all, but some sort of basis to figure out how kind of intellectually like um, elite that school is. So I was kind of looking at those um, for that purpose. But other than that, as long as you have some schools that have really high acceptance rates, um, so you know you're going to get into them, like University of Colorado Boulder is like an 89% acceptance rate. So if you want to go somewhere, like apply to those schools. Um, but other than that, like don't worry about it too much. Um, maybe get a good, good good amount of range. So you have some schools that are in the 30 to 40%, like Boston University, um, that kind of thing. And then get some that are lower to 20. So you have some reach schools that might be really cool to get accepted to. Next question is from a username saying lame. And I promise you, you're probably not lame if you're commenting on one of my videos. Um, he said, or he or she, gender neutral, um, do you work on campus and what advice do you have for balancing work and school? Yes, I work on campus. I am a campus tour guide um, and a few of you have actually seen me as tour guide and said hi, which is great. Um, and so balancing work and school, definitely um, you have to consider how many hours per week you're working. They cap your hours per week at 20. And for me, like going anything over 10 is like too strenuous because of my other extracurriculars. Um, but I'll be doing an entire video on how to get involved in college and how to kind of balance that. I honestly don't think about balancing it. I just think about doing what I want to do and then I kind of just have to figure it out naturally. 
Um, but yeah, it's just really up to you how many hours per week you work, but for me, 10 is like a good balance. Sadie Fisher asked, ooh, who is your favorite Disney princess? Um, I think growing up, um, Belle was probably my favorite just because, you know, um, I just like really loved her look. Obviously, she's like a reader. Um, I like that whole tale. And Emma Watson playing Belle in the new live action movie does not hurt either. Another Disney question from Lacey. She says, since you love Disney, what's your favorite Disney movie? Uh, my favorite Disney movie is actually Monsters University. It's a Pixar Disney movie. Caitlin asks, what are some major life lessons you learned from non-educational experiences in high school? So anything that I wouldn't put in a video on academics. I think a big thing for me was just like my first year of high school. I really learned that if you're not invited to something like a birthday party or just like a night out, like do not be mad at that. Like get over it, like get over yourself. Um, you don't have to be invited to everything. I know it may hurt, um, but there's probably a reason you weren't invited or if you weren't like invite them to stuff, like make them see that like you, they, you are fun to hang out with um, and overall like I, a lot of times I wouldn't think about like other people to invite when I was going out to lunch, I'd be like hey you two are right here let's go out to lunch, I wouldn't be like well who would be offended if I didn't invite them to lunch right now, like it's just sometimes it's just easier with some groups of people and I think that's really true in college like there are going to be little clicks in your, maybe your workplace or like your major or anything and like you just gotta get over like if you're not in those cl clicks like it's not a big deal and you'll be fine and perfect and wonderful. Eliza's life said, "What is one place you want to visit?" Um, I really want to go to Greece. Um, I'm kind of a sucker for anywhere that was featured in a Kardashian vacation episode, and Greece just forever and almost always will be my heart because also it's on the same latitude line as California, so the weather is kind of similar, and just like everything there is just so picturesque and beautiful and like. I just want to go sailing around the islands there. My parents actually have a sailing permit, so hopefully that happens within the next decade. Mackenzie asks, what's your favorite color? And it's blue. Don't tell anyone at the school though. Um, as far as everyone here is concerned, it's cardinal and gold. Jessica Patchen asks a really cool question. She said, I've heard that college is when you find your people. Do you feel like you found them? And if so, do you have any advice for incoming freshmen to find your people? Yes, this is such a good question. A lot of people say like, your college friends are gonna be your best friends for your entire life, like these are the people gonna be your bridesmaids, like screw your high school friends, they're gonna be gone, um, which isn't true. My high school friends are still super near and dear to me and they visit me and it's great, I love them. Um, my college friends, I wouldn't say they're like more my people, if that makes any sense. Like because I spent practically my entire life with like my high school friends, they like know me in and out and like know exactly what makes me tick and what makes me laugh and like so I can be completely myself with them. My college friends, in the same way, I can be completely myself with them, but they're just like so different than I expected. Like they're not the kind of people I thought I'd be hanging out with. Um, and that's partially because of band, but band people are the funniest people you will ever meet. Like I generally don't understand how these people became that funny. Like they're all so clever um, and make me laugh all the time and so different and I would never meet them if I had never joined band because just on campus like they wouldn't be the people I met. Um, and like in the tour get office those people are all amazing. They're all obsessed with Disney. Like we're all gonna go to Disneyland together which is crazy and makes total sense. Um, so those people are like my people in that way because they're all very like enthusiastic, outgoing, like love the school, really spirited. Um, so I think because I joined things that I really saw myself fitting into and everyone else there also did like we just all click very well um, so they are my people like I always think about like how the heck did I find these people um, because they literally fit me and make me so happy all the time um, so I would say to find your people like just join things like that or join things you like wouldn't necessarily expect yourself to fit into because you're gonna meet people that might expand yourself might expand your sense of humor um, and overall like just get involved. Freshmen are so afraid to get involved and join something that has a big time commitment, but that's the best thing you can do for yourself in so many ways, and I'm going to talk about that more in my involvement video later. Caitlin's Typical Life asked, how did it feel when you graduated high school, and how was it like when you got your acceptance letter to USC? Um, these are really cool things to reflect upon. Um, when I graduated high school, as I was just talking to a friend, I didn't cry when I graduated high school. I cried when I promoted when I was promoted from 8th grade to high school because my friends were all going to like different high schools. Um, but at, at, at the end of high school, you kind of just accept that like, that's the duration of your friendship. Like, the, one of the, my favorite quotes was, um, after you graduate high school, you realize there are some people you're only friends with because you see them five times a week. Like, honestly, if you 
if you ha you have that entire summer to test out the waters to see who like is gonna stick with you so like once you're in the summer and you don't see them five times a week and you don't really miss them or it kind of feels like a burden trying to hang out with them then you kind of just realize like that's just like the lifespan of your friendship and like they were great people and they gave you a great high school experience but like you like don't need to hang on to them because you're gonna meet so many more people so in high school it was kind of easy to graduate um, I definitely had a bunch of teachers that I was gonna miss because I was voted teacher's pet so I was really into them um, and I really just honestly I miss like how comfortable it is to live in your hometown because you have your own car you know where everything is you have your routine down you have all your favorite restaurants there um, so from there I think that's pretty much what I was gonna miss um, and then when I got my acceptance letter to USC, I was actually in Disneyland. I posted on Instagram about this, um, but I was in Disneyland with my band, so all my best friends were with me. Um, and my, I was watching Fantasmic, and my mom texted me like, you're waitlisted at Georgetown and accepted to USC. Um, and I was like, yay, and I told my friend, um, and I was really excited about it. But I wasn't like super ecstatic, just because, this is horrible to say, um, but because of my high school's track record with USC, literally like 50% of our students get accepted. So I kind of expected it, um, which is not something I did with any other college. It was literally just USC. I don't understand why I was that confident. Anyway, um, I was really, really excited. And then once I committed to USC and then sent in that enrollment deposit and like officially confirmed it, it was kind of underwhelming. Um, my experience visiting campus was crazy and then going home like a couple days later and like sending the deposit was just kind of like Mwah. but then once I posted a photo on Facebook it was like yeah that's real people were congratulating me felt a lot better so you know what celebrate your college post when, you, when you've committed um, because it does feel good to have people kind of recognize like that is a great choice for you Catherine like good for you John Films asked some really great questions one of them being how did you decide on a major please help I can't decide um, what is your major like? Would you recommend it? What kind of co jobs can you get out of it? Um, and so how did I choose my major? I was talking to um, someone yesterday about this, but basically a lot of my major was just a process of elimination. Um, so basically I hadn't decided, I think I decided on business by like sophomore year because I, I was touring Duke and I'm, I, I know I, I loved Duke and Duke was painful for me because they didn't have a business major. So. Um, kind of how I came to that conclusion of wanting to be a business major um, was I liked science, I was good at science, I excelled in it, but I hated doing lab reports. I hated that, it made me, I couldn't figure it out, like I didn't know if I was meeting their standards, um, and that kind of like is just how it is always. You never really know if you're doing a lab report correctly, um, so I hated that, didn't want to do that. Um, history wise, like social studies, I do not like research papers. I hate research papers, so I knew I didn't want to do anything in that field. Um, I really like English, I really like math, um, and I think business is just a good combination of a lot. I mean, I was always like a very bossy, headstrong girl, loved to make decisions, um, always thought about productivity and efficiency and kind of things like that, and I'm very oriented towards that kind of thinking. Um, so for me, this is a good way to kind of combine like statistics and math and critical thinking with, um, you know, obviously being good at presenting and marketing yourself, which is a lot of like English skills. Um, so for me, it just kind of wrapped up a lot of good things um, and it's very, very applicable to a lot of different things. So what can I do with it? Pretty much anything. Um, business, like it can take you from marketing to accounting to finance to management consulting um, to operations management. Um, to being a data analyst, like you can do pretty much anything within a corporation. Um, so basically for me, what I'm doing with business is I'm finding places that I love what they do um, and I'll rally around their cause. Because for me, I don't want to be um, just someone doing investment banking, which is basically, you know, working on Wall Street, like just kind of managing portfolios, that kind of stuff. It doesn't really entice me, like I doesn't really get to like, why am I doing this? What am I, you know, producing? Just money, I wanna work just around money. I wanna work for something I really believe in. So I've actually created a list of companies I'd love to work for just because of like me loving their products. So like Ikea, I love going to Ikea. Like Dyson, I love all the Dyson products with my entire heart. Obviously Disney I love with my entire heart. Pixar, um, all those places I just love. So I love to work for their corporate side and make decisions for them and help them improve because I generally believe in their mission. So that's kind of what I wanna do in business. Um, how should you pick a major? There are a lot of tests you can do that kind of confirmed that I'm a good business major, which made me feel even better about that choice. Um, but also just look around and, 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 and talk to people. Watch. 
TED Talks of what jobs people are doing nowadays. Like, look at what your parents' friends are doing, um, look at what your friends in college are majoring in, people that were interested and did similar things as you. Like, if you do Model UN, maybe you might want to think about international relations or political science or law or business, something like that. Um, look at what you're doing right now and like, whatever you love to do, like, just go for it. Um, and honestly, you can change your major so many times during college that like, as long as you go to a school like USC that has so many options, you don't have to worry about one of them not being there. Um, some colleges are very science heavy um, and low on humanities. So if you go into a science and decide, eh, I want to be a creative writing major and their department's not that good for that or it's just not existent, um, that's going to be rough. So if you go to a school that has pretty much everything, you can always change your major, no problem. Um, that happens like three to four times on average, I feel like. Um, so you will be fine. Um, just pick something that even has a little bit of interest in it and look for colleges that have a wide range of majors um, to kind of give you yourself a safety net. All right, so that was a lot longer than I wanted it to be, but um, that was like a, like a year of accumulated questions. So um, I want to thank you all so much for asking those. Um, continue to ask any questions um, down below, and I'll try my best to give you a decent answer. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Please subscribe so you can see my next video. Um, like this video if you appreciated um, me answering some of those questions, and I'll see you next time. Kath, out.